Hi, I'm Mickey. I'm Tiffany's daughter and I'm gonna do the kiln unloading today because mom is laid up with surgery post-operative so uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna just get into it. So what do we got here? These are these like tumbler things that mom made. She's got I think shadow blue and coastal blue. Oh, look, it's got a little bubble or something. What's in the bottom here? There's something in the... Oh, it's like just a... There's a little dot in there. I don't know if you can see it. It's just like a little glaze defect. It's not actually sharp or anything. But obviously it crawled on the... Or it, it uh, uh, melted to the kiln shelf. So thank you for the advancer shelves. That's nice. But I like these. They've got a little thing for a straw. So that's kind of cool. And little fishies. Okay, she's got two more of these. I don't know how she glazed these. So mom is gonna have to, Tiffany will have to show you these or like link down below or post the glaze somewhere on the screen. This one also crawled a little bit or melted. What is this called? I don't know, it's hot in here. I can't remember. Anyway, this is winter wood with uh, something. That's the winter wood, that's easy to identify. This is root beer on the bottom. Holly green and uh, lavender mist, probably. I don't know, this feels like a pop quiz. See, look on the inside, they're pretty good. Another little, this will hold a drinking straw, so they're actually pretty cute, I like this. Sorry, there's a little bit of traffic noise because it's like 100 degrees in this room. Uh, oh my gosh, this thing, okay. It's 100 degrees in this room and the kiln has actually been done firing for about two days. I just haven't had time to film anything because I have, I'm very busy. Um, there's already a spider making a nest in this one. Where's the, where's the thing? I don't know if you can see that. There's a little spider in there. Like guys. Anyway, these are um, a series of mugs that say reader on them. And I've done four in each color. Get out of there. Get, I hate spiders. I've done four in each color, and then I've got 20 of these, and I'll put them on. I'm doing an experiment to try the TikTok shop with pottery, so we'll see how it works. Um, it'll probably just be under my TikTok Mickey Helmer, but anyway. I don't remember what this was. What was this? Pear? Prickly pear cactus glaze with kimchi on the rim. Pretty heavy coat of kimchi there. And it kind of, I don't know if you can see inside there, but this, it pink, it breaks pink and goes a little purple. And that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted a little bit more pink, but you get what you get. There's two more of this color. And then one of them didn't make the kiln, so. Not bad. Let's see. Yeah, that's fully glazed. Oh, I like that. Look, it ran exactly to my wax resist line. I wax resist the bottoms because I didn't want to have to deal with it. Perfect. Nice coating on there. Okay. Oh, this is a cute little thing. This one. It's just a bird. Little sky celadon on there. We, we um, have a little mold and I decided to slip cast the tiny birds. We don't know what we're going to do with these yet, but... We have tiny birds now. Okay, okay. Back to our regular scheduled program. Sorry, I was uh, interrupted briefly. This is uh, just a nice little mug that I made with, oh my gosh, Sambao? Under glaze transfer? Yeah, Sambao with uh, kimchi on the top, just because I love kimchi. I like the pinky look. Um, it's a nice little, little handle. I made this. It's got my little maker's mark. Right there in the in the glaze. What are these? Some of this I don't even know what it is. Oh, the little ornaments. This one, all holly green on these. Uh oh. Oh, careful. Well, every nothing broke, so we're good. A little mousse with the root beer glaze, I think. Looks like root beer. Yeah, she's good. She didn't break. I'm doing okay. Another tree of life ornament. 
Another one. Put those over there so I don't break them. Okay, we've got, ooh, well, those are gonna get to go back in. So nice. They all did the exact same horrible thing. So these are the lavender mist dipped with cream on the rims. And I do not like how it turned out. It pinholed all to crap. These ones, this one didn't even cover nicely, but it's got all these little pinholes. I don't know if you can see them. Uh, the texture of the lavender mist itself is suspicious. It's almost like egg texture, like the texture of an eggshell. Um, I don't love that. These were supposed to be glossy. So it's like that even on the inside. You can see the texture. Yeah, you can see that texture there. Um, it's not great. And there's even little air bubbles that have popped right, I don't know if we can, right there on top of the sprig. Uh, well, you can't get everything perfect all the time. Also, I have plenty of time. I could just remake them. That's the best part is it's just dirt, you know? You just remake it. Oh, these turned out pretty good. Clearly, the shadow blue did not cover well on these. Oh, this one's perfect. This one is glazed really well. That one's nice. See, the shadow blue combo with the coastal blue on the rim. I like how it breaks like waves on the bottom. These did not cover so well. So that is gonna go in the seconds bin. We'll probably put that in the seconds. Um, all the bottoms are doing great on these. I like this. See, that did not cover well. So clearly you can't just dunk in the shadow blue that we have. You have to let it sit for a couple of seconds instead of just doing a quick pour over. It doesn't like that. So reglaze. Where's the fourth one of those? Oh, there's the fourth one. There it is, counting. See, this one turned out good too. Oh, it, until you turn it around and then it's a little, well, fine. I guess it's still covered. It still looks okay. Up close, there's like no ridge here where there's a difference in the glaze thickness, um, but it is, it's kind of like breaking with white little fractals right in there. I don't know if you can see that here, but it's still good. This crawling activity here, I don't like how that worked out, but. Uh, really great on the inside. Looks good. I don't know whose this is. This, I don't know who did this, but pretty. I like the, let's see if I can guess these colors. Hmm. Nope, nope, not a clue. Not a clue in these colors. Maybe winter wood with something, something, something. Where do you get that white? That's clearly not cream though, because of the red in here. So mom's gonna have to put it on the little thing. I don't know. Those came over there. Okie dokie. Um, well, ooh. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Okay. Oh, okay, well, one came off, the others are stuck. So I think Savannah made these. This is, a, I think, a lavender mist. It might be the royal purple with lavender mist on the rim. I think that's actually what it is. I think it's a ro the royal purple with lavender mist on the rim. Kind of cool how it did that little drip all the way down. Here's the base. The royal purple is a matte glaze and it tends to do this if you're putting it, um, if there's anything on the pot underneath it, it will pit and bubble like this. It'll, it'll um, pinhole pretty fiercely. Here it is doing it again. And this is also sometimes something that happens when you put two, a matte glaze with a glossy glaze. Lavender mist is not, is more matte, but it still has some gloss to it. And you can see where the two are meeting and overlapping in some areas. Um, they're blistering and boiling and uh, doing this bubbling thing. So this could potentially go in a second time with no more added glaze to it, maybe a little bit on the rim. But if it went in a second time, I would actually expect it to do more of this. Um, and that's the danger with royal purple plus any other glaze. So, oh, but this is cool how it, I don't know if you can see this little bit right there where my finger is. It's got a little teal spot. Cute. 
Um, but anyway, it ran really bad, and the other two bowls are stuck to that shelf. So we'll pick up the shelf, and I can show you the two bowls, because they're actually really cool. They're beautiful pieces, but uh, I mean, yeah, it's pretty bad. So I'm going to... I think these are Savannah's. I'm so sorry, but I think I'm going to have Savannah take these off so she can see how um, part of the fundamental learning experience is when your your piece runs to the kiln shelf, you got to learn how to take it off without ruining your piece. So I'm going to let her do that. But again, on these, the royal purple with the lavender mist, I'm pretty sure that's lavender mist. I might be wrong, but mom will correct me. Um, I don't know if you can see in there, but it is. it did do the boiling thing where the two glazes meet and you got to be careful sometimes matte glazes with a glossy glaze do that so i don't know how to fix it haven't haven't done a lot enough experimentation but these are real pretty shame don't do this don't do this malibu barbara you knew better wow it did not i have a suspicion that we might need to look at our kiln elements this is a um, glaze called Malibu Barbara. It's done by Midnight Ceramics. Uh, I think Brian, I might be wrong. He does small batch glazes out of New York and Malibu Barbara is my is one of my favorites. I really like um, his spider wick glaze, spider something, and his spruce string bean glaze. Like, oh my gosh, I would die for that glaze. It's so good. Turns out perfect every time. Malibu Barbara usually turns out perfect every time. And what Malibu Barbara usually does is not this. But this, this is usually what Malibu Barbara does. I don't know if you can see, this is a pot I glazed a year ago. So he must have changed his formula, which, and this is the same body, clay body. So there's no difference there. Um, this is two coats, this is two coats. So I was actually hoping, like Ma Malibu Barbara, the pink, burns out and does this white pretty thing here out of the flux thing that it's doing and uh, it's starting to do it on the back here but it's a matte you see how glossy this is and how matte this is so i'm tempted to say this didn't get to temperature even though i think we can digitally look and make sure it did but because this glaze is not turning out the way it's supposed to it's not getting as hot as it needed to get so we'll have to refire this one as well and look, the three other ones, because I made four, uh, four of each color, these all did the exact same. See, it's starting to do that fractal thing here, but it didn't quite brighten up like it's supposed to. So either the materials have changed or something's wrong with the heat. So, but it did, it did drip the way it's supposed to. Hmm. Like it did do some of the things, like it's, it's lighter down here like it's supposed to be. Maybe I put on too many coats. I don't know. I thought I put on only two, so... Try again. We'll try, try, try again. And I get super, super picky with my glazes. I know my mom doesn't, but I'm like, I want it to turn out exactly the way I planned it to turn out. Otherwise I get a little unhappy with the piece. So um, these are from Savannah, little chip and dippies. And I think this is holly green with cream on it or possibly seaweed. The way that that has, uh, run the way that it is. It's a little bit pretty good. That's actually really great. It's a nice piece. These other two are also from Savannah. She did, ooh, I want to say this is uh, the body that she's using is be mixed with sand and I don't know what she's done here. She's done splotches. This looks like a crystal glaze, probably midnight rain, maybe, with that royal purple on it. But the royal purple here has gone glossy, which is kind of cool because of the glaze that was underneath it. So lucky her. I would have assumed that that would boil, unless this is a different glaze and I'm not aware of it. It is, it is a little pinholey, but not too bad. Pretty, just hit that with a little bit of sandpaper, like fine grit and uh, it'll do great. I don't know if you can see the the like iridescent glossy thing that she's got going on here. Pretty good. Okay, this one, 
is a little bit more Northern Lights-ish. And she has done spots of glaze. I don't know, she's got a whole bunch of combos here going on to get these reds to, and this looks like Lavender Mist again, or maybe Aurora. Hmm. I don't know, Lavender Mist is a popular one. There's a blue in here. I'm not sure, Shadow Blue maybe? Can you see Shadow Blue in there? I'm not sure. Well, pretty though. Okay, next shelf. Oh, wow. Okay. This has stuck to the thing. <laughs> You don't stick to this one either, little guys. There we go. Oh, yes. I like seeing pieces that work out. Okay, this next bit is for my sister-in-law, Bethany. My mom reglazed her this beautiful, beautiful platter. And I like what, I don't know what my mom put on here. I know this is Mulberry Celadon. But I don't know what she did to get these white fractals in here. But this is a reglaze, and so this is a really unique piece. It can never be replicated because it's been fired like twice or three times. Really, really pretty. Let's look at the back. Just a nice green. Those feet deserve a little bit of love, though. They're cute. But yeah, this is a huge piece. Very difficult to fire, let alone fire twice. There's no cracking in a big piece like this. You would expect there to be stress fractures along these edges here, but there's nothing. And it, you hear that? Listen carefully. Perfect. Okay, the rest of these are mine. We got a, this is the reglaze shelf, isn't it? These were glazed poppy. A Celadon Poppy from, I don't know, Amico Mako, uh, Potter's Choice. That's the one. And they the, they were done poppy, but the pink burned out. So um, I reglazed them and you can only put like one layer on. And this one was still, you can, this is what happens um, when you reglaze a piece and it's not perfectly dry or it crackles, the glaze um, crawls before it is dry. I don't know if you can see these fine, like lightning bolt lines. It might be something cool to try, you know, on purpose. Anyway, do a glaze piece and then reglaze it to get these lightning bolt effects. That's kind of cool. Um, so anyway, I, these are just for my personal collection because so I can use them as like little cookie plates uh, because they were stark white and I don't, I didn't want that. So this one is cute yellow. Little Stego Triceratops. I love dinos. Ooh, these are remakes. I had a customer. Oh, it it crawled or it, it melted to the shelf a little bit. Um, I had a customer uh, who had one that looked just like this one, and it broke, and she wanted another. And I was like, well, I better make two, and she can have which one she likes. So if you break a piece of mine, and if I like the piece enough, I'll remake it. So. Um, another one with the underglaze transfer and then a kimchi over the top because I like how kimchi runs over underglaze transfers. It's so pretty because you would think that it's a totally opaque glaze based on what's going on, on the inside. There's nothing else layering over it, but then when you put it over an underglaze transfer, it does some interesting things, kind of like the coastal blue, but uh, better. I like this sunset look a little bit more, this little blush. This one, I didn't bring it down as far. So you can see that white line of the glaze uh, breaking at the end there and collecting at the end of the glaze. Real pretty, I like these. These ones did crawl, but they just need a little bit of upkeep. They'll be okay, or not crawl, melted to the shelf, but they'll be fine. Last shelf, okay. Um... Let's get these big items out of the way, or this one. This, huh, is mine. <laughs> I glazed this, but it's not supposed to look like that. I didn't recognize it. Um, oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. I don't know if you can see this iridescent reflection that's coming off of every single one of these little spots. Um, this is, 
I glazed these months ago and they've just been sitting around because they haven't um, made they, they haven't been the right size for a kiln. So this time they got in the kiln. This is black oh obsidian. Oh man, I love that black. Um, obsidian glaze with a bunch of stuff just just put on top of it. Just like splattered everywhere on the rim. Um, oh that's that backside is really, really, really pretty. So this is just a hodgepodge of glazes. Anything I could think of that I might want to go on this went on this. So the um, obsidian glaze is clearly a little too thick in some areas, but it worked out because um, the obsidian glaze mixing instructions for the obsidian dippable are incorrect somehow. And it, I have never been able to get it to not hard pan. Um, so it's difficult to work with. This is a dippable. Um, so I've had to really, really work with that obsidian glaze. I wonder, like adding a lot of Epsom salts to it, like more than you should to get something to stop doing hard panning. Anyway, it's a whole, a whole thing, but this is real pretty. I don't know. These are for a friend of mine. She requested that I, she had bought two of my chip and dips, um, but they chipped on her because she uses them a lot. So I said, I'll make you some new ones. I like this one because it's kind of like almost a perfect crescent moon. You see the moon right there? So these are my chip and dippies. Okay, let's let's pull out some of these tiny things. There's like an octopus down here. I want my hands on it. Oh, cute. It's got a little post on it. So I'll, I'll leave Savannah to take that off. Look at that cute little octopus. Smooth brain. No thoughts in there. It's so pleasant though. <laughs> okay, what else do we got? Oh, there's like these cute little gnomes. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. Sorry. Shit. So, so. That was the post it was standing on that fell off. It fell off the post and fell onto the green man. That's all one piece. Now it is forever joined in unholy melting, melt, meltrimony. Unholy meltrimony. That's kind of funny how that landed. Help me! <laughs> I have a, his even, his face even looks, I have a headache! <laughs> anyway, it's supposed to look like this. <laughs> right here with the cute little, oh, she's cute. This little bearded lady. I'm calling her a bearded lady. Little drag gnome or something. Cute. Here, let's pop this off. Actually, I'm not going to. Do you see how that ran onto the... I don't want to be the one responsible for breaking that. So that is that is Tiffany's responsibility. She's going to take that apart. <laughs> okay, what else we got on here? Nothing else fell over, right, guys? Oh, this is cute. We have to come up with some cute things sometimes. Just some small stuff to fill in the kiln. And, uh... Look at this little moon sitting on a star. That's adorable. I don't even know what that's for. I don't care. I like it. Okay, what else have we got here? Oh, we've got some... Well, guys, you can't keep doing this. Okay, here we go. We've got a little little sun. It stands up. I don't know. They, they stand up. That one's got a face. And this one doesn't have a face. It's got a little spiral. So, face... Spiral. Yeah, cute. Cute little standees. Cute little buddies. What else do we got down here? This is interesting. What is this? It's like a little green man standing on his leaves. See, he stands up too. Not bad. This guy does not have a headache. He's thinking about giving someone else a headache though. <laughs> Uh, okay, what else do we got? Okay, these are cute. These are adorable. My mom makes these adorable little gnomes. This one, this is the one that, the matching one to the one that fell over on the green man, so he's just gonna have to be alone now. But look at his little friend with his sunflower hat. They have cute little summer gnomes. I kind of want these for my little house plants. And I have, don't ask, 
I don't know what colors those were. I just don't know. This one too. I don't know what color this one is. But here's another beardy gnome. But this is a Halloween-y version. Cute. It's hollow on the inside. I didn't know that. But mom has done Aurora, I think. That looks Aurora-ish. She will post it on the screen or down below. That's cute though. Look at his little, his little face. Okay. Let's see. We got like a whole gnome family down here. I'm gonna be careful. Okay, got mini gnomes. Minis. There's a tiny one. There's a little mini house. A mini fairy house. That one's way cute. It's not hollow. This one's not hollow. Neither is this guy. Got a hole in him though. He must be thrown because he weighs nothing. Little cuties. Okay. Oh my god. I just hit my knee and it hurts real bad. Okay. Another little mini, mini house. My mom is going to have to post in here a little bit or do a voiceover about how she actually made this because I know she glazed it in a unique way for these windows, but I don't know what she did. So I guess tell them, mom. Put a picture up. I don't know. A little mini gnome. All right, let's see. These little guys, more toadstools over here. Oh my gosh, this is just a hat. It's just a little hat. It's got velvet underglaze black on it with a little ladybug. Oh, she's cute. Mom got super creative. I'm pretty sure my mom made these ones. And these little mini mushrooms. I know the mushroom game is coming up. Either it's coming up or it's past. I usually participate where you... The mushroom game is where you make like a mushroom and you're an artist and you like a mushroom art and you just like post... You just leave it around town or, or in secret places and people find it and then they get free art. It's a little mushroom hunt. Okay, we got bowls. Okay, what's, what are you... Ooh, it's a nicely done bowl. Nice foot. It warps just a little bit in the fire, but that can happen. Usually this kind of warping will happen while it's being made or pulled off the bat. And then it comes out in this final firing. And it's, but, but this is still a very fine bowl. I like this lip because you know, like when you're eating cereal or like nachos or something and you can't it goes over the lip and falls down. I like it when they're kind of curved in a little bit because then it, it prevents that. It helps prevent that. Let's just, a determined mess, messy eater is going to make a mess no matter what. But I like that. I don't know what she did. I think this is pear with kimchi or a prickly pear with the cactus, prickly cactus, cactus, a cactus glaze with kimchi over the top because it's breaking a little purple, not, doesn't have as many pinks. So this is like a one coat of kimchi and not two. So I'm gonna look at the other side. Pretty good. This one is very similar. Very similar, very similar. Same glazing. So I'm pretty sure it's the prickly pear spectrum glaze, I think. And with the kimchi over the top. Pretty good glaze. Okay, for the last piece, last one. <laughs> this one, my second got a little dust in it. Get out dust. This is the second chip and dip bowl I did and it's a little bit of a different shape so it doesn't have perfect uh, crescent but it's the same glazing and you can see where I've just put a bunch of crap on it. I've just put every glaze I could think of. It crawled a little bit on the rims but this is not a problem. Oh I like these. See how that it flushes iridescent right there? Oh so cool. And it's not even a luster glaze in there. It's just normal food safe glazes. And I just put them all together because uh, no one could tell me I couldn't. <laughs> Very cool. Anyway, it is hot here. I'm sweating a lot. Um, thank you. Thank you for coming to our kiln opening for Hubble Creek Pottery. We will get back to our regularly scheduled programming soon, I think. Maybe once my mom is feeling a little better. And um, hopefully I'll have another kiln load done and ready to unload soon. So have a good day.